Welcome back. After the break, I am Yulia Piechna Nask and Shimon Vujic of the Ideas Foundation. You know that this discussion, this debate will depend on what subject you have selected. We offered you three themes inspired by the latest events. Uh, what you need, uh, what problems you face, what is important to you. Now is time to announce the winner. The winning subject matter of our discussion. Here is the return of the vote. The winning theme, the winner is cyberbullying. The winning uh, theme this year is cyberbullying. Uh, interestingly, uh, last year there were different uh, themes to choose from, but uh, cyberbullying also won. So for the number of years, we conclude the conference with a free-for-all debate, a kind of a Hyde Park discussion, uh, sharing and making a number of suggestions to us. After our last year's debate, we uh, got a lot of feedback. Last year, uh, uh, you complained that there was plenty of problem descriptions uh, and uh, not, few, not enough for uh, specific solutions. Uh, and this year, we discussed uh, a number of solutions, including the Forum Theater. And I hope that this feedback will be uh, as valuable. So this year, we come up with an additional element. Uh, 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 we will uh, like. We would like you to. to we'd like to poll your opinions uh, through the Kahoot application. Uh, get your smartphones or tablets, please. Uh, I'm really surprised that cyberbullying uh, uh, is the winner. I, I thought that there will be other topics. Okay, right. Please write in this address, kahoot. Uh, dot and t, and uh, enter the pin number which you can which you can now see on the screen. For our information, for our foreign guests, questions are in Polish, but they will be in interpreted live uh, into English. So all of you will be able to participate. Here are the participants. Uh, more and more. Uh, you probably are familiar uh, with the Kahoot option. Uh, here is the option, uh, Kahoot option, which is the survey of your opinions. We'll be collecting your opinions and discussing them. Conference president has also logged in. Anya. Anya. Great. Okay, the final countdown. Cut off. Around 60. Okay. 
That's the cutoff point. Uh, thank you. Uh, oh, more are coming. Uh, allow a, a few more moments. On this occasion, we, we will know the turnout or attendance in this room today. Okay, almost 70. <laughs> I click on the cutoff, we begin. There will be three questions. How, the first question, how often you en encounter cyberbullying uh, cases in your work? Answers, uh, never uh, come across such uh, situations. Sporadically, this is the second answer, and frequently the third response. There are three responses to choose from. Time is up slowly. It's, I guess we got all answers. And here is the outcome. We have uh, some people who have not come across such situations, some of them who um, uh, come across uh, cyberbullying quite frequently, and most of you only sporadically. This confirms our initial question that you come, do experience such cases. We would like to ask you uh, about the most frequent uh, experiences. Uh, what uh, specific problems you encounter uh, in the area of cyberbullying? Or maybe you have heard about any, uh, any cyberbullying incidents uh, from your friends. There is a roving microphone in the room and we'll be really keen to listen to your experiences as you share them, please. Particularly addressing those people who, who, who answered or responded, they experience such instances frequently. First row, uh, first row lady, are you are you uh, wishing to? Do you wish to take the floor? Okay, gentlemen, there. Wait for the microphone. Another lady to speak. Is the mic working? I will tell you more. I work in a high school, and there are cases when uh, there is a conflict in a class, in the classroom, and this conflict moves on to web space. That's where they exchange invectives, uh, malicious comments uh, attack themselves uh, verbally. They also publish uh, kind of uh, photo manipulation, uh, pictures uh, offensive to a given person. Speak to the microphones, please. Microphones, switch on the mic. There is something wrong with the microphone. OK, we haven't heard the beginning of this statement. All right, you are a diligent student, uh, um, exemplary student, and you are different, therefore. 
you always do your homework and all the other students think well he is uh, uh, upgrading the the standard uh, in this class. This is a nuisance. We have to make him climb down from this high level. So they attack his account on Facebook. And then if this uh, online pressure is not enough, they, he is attacked offline. Um, and that uh, boy believes or comes to the conclusion that he will not uh, get out of line. Uh, you ask him about his homework and he uh, lies that he hasn't done his homework. And after uh, the class, he will show the teacher uh, his homework in private. That's one sad case. Uh, the, the young kid uh, somehow adapted to this new situation. And the second incident, uh, a boy, when he was in uh, uh, upper primary school, became a victim uh, of bullying. He went to high school after experiencing uh, violence. He's scared of anything, even scared to talk, holding aloof from the peers. And and even if those new colleagues uh, are not aggressive or not bullying at all, would like to embrace him friendly, friendly in a friendly manner. But he is so fearful that, that he provokes them. Uh, he wants to become or be in the focus of attention. Uh, he uh, resorts to a number of provo provocative gestures. That's what he experienced. And the response is not quite uh, favorable. So there is this carryover uh, effect from the previous uh, uh, bad experience. Thank you for those contributions. Uh, here, uh, cyberbullying uh, was put in the context of more uh, general situations in the peer group. Any other such instances that you could share, please? Who else would like to share? Any other examples, please? Ja się podzielę takim przykładem, który nie będzie taki drastyczny. I will share an example which is not so dramatic. Well, I say marked. There are sporadic cases. Maybe it's not about frequency, but uh, uh, things happen uh, before my eyes quite often. But the scale of, uh, the, 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 of emotions is not so high. I work in a primary school, so the cases are not as acute. But I can share with you an anecdote. Last year, I took my kids to McDonald's. And we were sat there, and two kids, a boy and a girl, sat across me, across the table from me. And at a certain point, the girl says, Mom, he's offending me. I was not very empathic. Uh, I didn't comment on that. I was busy talking to other kids. And then, in a moment, she says, but uh, Mom, he's uh, insulting me. It's very vulgar, very rude. I said, child, he's not talking to you. He's sitting in front of me, she says. But he's offending me on Facebook. Those kids had their uh, mobile phones, smartphones on the table, and they were talking on Facebook. I, I couldn't see that. And then when I checked, it was kind of offending. I asked the boy to show me his mobile phone. He was telling 
very nasty things to the girl. He could have told her directly. So I think this type of um, uh, violence is, is quite frequent. It's happening uh, in our very eyes. I was just uh, sitting uh, just across the table, very close. I hope you're not writing her anything. Well, uh, linking to what you said, it is easier for us to uh, harm someone on the web because we feel uh, unpunished. <coughs> but the consequences are uh, same as if someone told us that uh, straight in the face. This is the specificity of the communication. Well, maybe uh, the, the, the discussion wouldn't have happened uh, live, but it happens on Facebook. I have another uh, speaker here. Uh, well, I would like to share a reflection. Uh, when the cyberbullying became obvious, 10, 11 years ago, I was in a gymnasium in secondary school. There was no Facebook, no Twitter, Instagram, and all those other social medias, which we know now, but there was an application called Gadu Gadu, which was a Polish communicator. Anonymity, that was the basis for internet discussions. Uh, you could have a few people starting a group chat, talk through the internet. And already then, I remember, as a student, there were situations which we would qualify as cyberbullying today. Uh, my classmate, she had good relations with everyone, but and being anonymous allowed her to, uh, well, she was bored, probably. She created a fictitious amount, account, as we would call it in Facebook, and there was a number, and she started offending everyone from that number. Her colleagues, uh, girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, she loved them, then she hated them, she didn't like them. And this is the cyberbullying. Uh, when there was a discussion, anonymous discussion in the internet, this is when it all started. It is obvious it's uh, easier right now. Other social media are expanding and it will uh, grow. Uh, schools, I'm seeing that uh, cyberbullying, there are sporadic cases. But there is a lot of hate speech. <coughs> A teacher from a high school mentioned that during the discussions. It starts at school, it continues in, um, in the web, online, and sometimes it grows bigger. I remember the times of Gado Gado. This was a time we really uh, got enthusiastic about the new possibilities, and we thought we're really anonymous. And indeed, I remember I didn't offend anyone, but I remember there were some uh, uncool situations. This was cyberbullying without anyone naming it. It wasn't fully defined, at least in Poland. But uh, 10 years ago, when uh, people started talking about it, it seemed that the being anonymous is key to offend others. But history has verified it. Facebook is the biggest portal in Poland. It is not anonymous anymore, and the majority of participants uh, show up under, under their real names. So it doesn't prevent cyberbullying. Being anonymous is significant, but it doesn't resolve all the problems. <laughs> I think that, well, uh, gymnasium, uh, high school students are uh, pretty well educated already as far as uh, cyberbullying is concerned and uh, the cyber world. But in primary schools, despite, with all respect uh, for the teachers, uh, I'm, I'm one of those, but uh, I have the impression that kids do not uh, completely recognize what cyberbullying is. This is why in, uh, in the younger schools, younger age groups, why are there sporadic cases? Because we don't know about them. Because kids don't come to us. I'm getting the impression that they don't recognize it. They don't know what cyberbullying is and what is not. 
uh, what I encountered. Uh, my students came to me saying, ah, because he stole my account, the password to my account in a game, and he took me some coins. And this is cyberbullying for, for the kid. They came to me not because they didn't trust, but uh, the fact that someone wrote something which was not nice is something normal. Well, it happens. Uh, people do write things on the, on the internet. So here we have to, uh, to know that we, the educators, we should show some specifics. What are the forms of cyberbullying? What is cyberbullying all about? From the youngest age, where we said it several times in the two days, that's how the world is, the computer, the, the internet, the web. The younger the kids um, play with it, the harder it gets. It's our role to, uh, to show it to them. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what, it's very important what you, what you just said. We often do not know that cyberbullying took place because kids don't talk about it. And the studies show that the most frequent reaction of the victims is no reaction at all. They don't report the situation to anyone. I would like to thank you for this statement because my name is Magda. I train cyberbullying in the Lower Silesia. And in fact, in every class, I marked yellow that those uh, situations happen quite often. In every school, in every class I've been invited to as an educator, uh, those cases uh, took place, happened whether it was stealing game coins or some nasty vulgar comments. So hate speech is a form of uh, cyberbullying. Youth kids say that they don't report that to the teachers for one important reason, because the teacher doesn't know what Snapchat is. He doesn't know what uh, Instagram is. The teacher has no account on Facebook. Uh, the teacher says it's only the internet. I'm not uh, saying that to you who are really interested in it, but so very often it happened. I was involved in some uh, teaching, and the teacher has the will and the possibility to stay, but he or she doesn't. They say, well, I'm not interested. I'm not uh, on Facebook. I'm not participating actively in the life of the children who are the uh, digital natives. For them, it's extended reality. Uh, he cannot approach them because they don't understand what uh, is being told. And one more uh, thought I would like to share. I do training with teachers, and I have uh, an exercise matching a logo to the name of the application and to the extended definition of the application. And these are not exotic, complicated applications. Kids would, could do that in one minute. But indeed, resolving the, uh, the problem, finding the solution, it's done in groups. So there is possibility for to cooperate. But unfortunately, they don't manage. They, they can't do it fast. We have to do it in groups. So I think what you have said, my uh, the, the previous speaker said, uh, it's important to know what are we using. Uh, there are uh, there is an increasing number of applications. They get more and more advanced, and it's not only Facebook, but several applications uh, for different channels. You have to know them. Well, there is one more uh, statement. I would like to agree and disagree at the same time. Uh, first, the matter of whether students tell teachers, it's important for them to, to, to inform. But I don't want to, um, uh, to teach kids that uh, whatever happens, uh, they, go, they run to the teacher or to the parents. They have to learn how to handle, cope with problems on their own. I would like to find a balance here. Second thing, as you said, to uh, tell children about the forms of uh, cyberbullying it's like with prevention or in drug addictions. We shouldn't teach them what other forms 
What else can they do online? Interesting, nasty to, uh, to people they know. So you have to be very careful so you don't escalate instead of preventing. Briefly, I, I can't, I have to say it to what uh, you have said, the educator. This was uh, certainly important and valuable, but on every training I hear, we adult people, we don't have the IT competencies and kids know better. I don't agree with that. I disagree 100%. In my phone, I have Instagram, Snapchat, and most of you do too. I think 10 years ago, it was the case, but now, let us, let's not give up to those young people. We, don't, let, we should not tell them you know better. When a kid comes and says, uh, he'll connect me my laptop, I said, well, I'm moving my video editing, uh, do two Excels and a PowerPoint, and you will show me IT competencies. The fact that someone can uh, scroll through pages uh, fast, it's not uh, IT competency. Don't give up to the kids. Well, I have to give a reply to that. I'm sorry. I underline that it's great that you are here. I'm very pleased. This conference is uh, it's outstanding because it brings together people who are interested in, the, in this uh, domain. I'm happy you have those uh, applications. I'm not generalizing. Uh, young people have more knowledge about mobile applications, but we have more knowledge about the consequences and threats of using the internet. So I would differentiate those two things. Uh, but I'm very pleased it's happening and uh, that the majority of teachers have the applications. We have at least three, four, five. Well, both ladies were right. Some of the teachers are great, know a lot, some do not. I would like to get uh, references of basic courses for teachers. So those who want and don't know yet, so they start learning the applications, the software, and so on. Well, uh, quickly, uh, a quick uh, advertising minute. There are many tools. We have our e-learning, uh, safety of children in the internet. There is the exercise you mentioned, recognizing application logos and general knowledge of the trends and then other problems. But we have some more uh, panelists. Ukas Wojtasik, Empowering Children. Foundation, I would like to relate to what you are talking about, our experience, the experience of our collaboration with teachers, meeting with teachers in schools. I have the feeling that cyberbullying, as mentioned during this conference, well, we should uh, highlight the word uh, bullying rather than uh, cyber. The competencies, the knowledge of the, uh, of the cyber environment is not key. We should uh, teach children how to configure their account on Facebook. We, do, we need to know Facebook, Snapchat, so we know we're, what we're talking about. Well, kids uh, don't talk to us because they don't trust us. They don't see partners in us. There is no communication. There is no community in school that would uh, support contacts. If you relate to the situation, situations uh, we often hear about, Cyberbullying is combined with bullying. Uh, short, if, if someone laughs at a kid that it has a different uh, orientation, it's from Ukraine, it's fatter. It's not about Snapchat, Facebook, or any uh, online uh, environment. If we have the possibility, Anchorage, to talk about it, if your student tells you that he's being offended by Facebook, this is uh, a moment to get interested, to talk, to look at this uh, community, but uh, it's confirmed by studies that young people say they're not looking for help because they don't expect to get any, not because they are concerned that uh, the meanders of internet are too complicated. It is certainly very important direction. I also think that we don't need to react uh, every time. If we say kids feel offended, but it's no harm, 
Well, not every exchange. There's plenty of that. We would have the whole class on our back. It's important for kids to tell us about the things that are subjectively real harm to them. Some don't, don't really care, and that's very good. But be careful, let's be careful with situations that are really a problem, and we sometimes neglect them. And this is, I'm talking about it because we are meeting teachers who say, we learned about a case. We had no idea about Facebook. We have no Facebook. You can always find help, information. Important thing is uh, that you want to help the kids. Hello, Wojtek. I came from Torun. I'm running a Ventka. We are fishing kids and youth in, uh, st in the streets. We are street walkers. And we uh, noticed a phenomenon in uh, Torun that kids disappear from the streets. We found all those kids, several dozen children, in the internet. And this is how we started functioning as networkers. It's fantastic. There is an increasing awareness of the adults that their kids get lost there. On a real street, there is police, municipal police. There is us, the kids, youth. It's a natural guard. In the internet, the guardians are in lower numbers, and the, uh, the, the kids go completely unpunished. Uh, and those we fished through snaps, intergrams, comments, uh, uh, following likes. We have found the kids who came every day to our association. We have a daily care center of sort. And there is a great thing that uh, you have Snapchat, you have the Instagram, but the majority of the parents don't have them. Most of the parents do not know they could have Snapchat or Facebook. We have meetings with um, teachers, parents, school headmasters. The lack of awareness is scary. There is no concentration, there is no focus during the meetings with parents or teachers. When we, when we explain what Snapchat is, how many hours per day it can suck out of your kid's time, there's nothing I can do. There are so many tools that are not being too used by parents. Educational methods in the internet, cyberspace. Parents do not know what they can possibly do. So I think it's a pre precursor to be a networker, uh, to know how to suggest to parents, uh, how not to react where the kids access a porn site or their first symptoms of uh, uh, addiction to game portals. I think we, uh, we need to be very careful. We are trying to be very careful not to scare the parents away with the, uh, with the image of their lack of conscience. We can scare a parent being on the pedestal we know, and now be careful because your kid is there and there is, uh, it is at risk. Uh, we need a compendium of knowledge for the parents. Let's not delegate everything, drop the load of cyber education to schools. Everything happens at home. The gaps come from home. School is only a stage in the process. So we have to do, go into the digital relation between parents and kids. Parents shouldn't be afraid of the space in which they kill children operate. There is a very visual situation. There is a small kid left alone on a big intersection. And we leave the kid behind. It has to cross one street and it disappears because it has to cross the cyber intersection through one portal, second portal, another website. And there are no safeties there. The child disappears, gets smashed crushed by the porn tramway, game tramway. I think parents, parents, and parents again. This is the direction to follow, to gently introduce ourselves. We are parents too, so our children are there. You cannot avoid internet. It's a necessity, but we have to be there with them, as free in the relationships as we are in the playground or at home. We're meeting our kids for five minutes a week. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the space. Every year I come here, 
and uh, I come empty and I leave full. More contribution. Ja tylko by... ja mam swoje. Uh, thank you for this intervention. It's important. What is cyber relationship? What cyber education? For me, uh, well, all the time we are uh, moving or circling over the surface of the internet, but we should take care of relationship and upbringing. Is the fact that the kid goes to pornographic uh, site, is it uh, due to lack of cyber education or is it due to the fact that the, get, uh, the, ch the child wants to get information it has not received uh, from the parents? Uh, it's uh, not all about uh, parents having uh, digital or cyber competences. The important thing is for the parents uh, to have that kind of relationship that uh, uh, the child, uh, when the child faces a problem, can uh, freely contact the parent, uh, has trust in the parent. This is the key, in my view. Previously, I referred to the school. Uh, uh, the same goes true for teachers as well as parents. Thank you. We have uh, uh, the second question, uh, which is related to this one. But before that, uh, we have the, the final uh, contribution, <coughs> Grzegorz Gołębiowski, uh, Territorial Self-Help uh, Association, <coughs> the Association of uh, Citizens Journalists of the Lublin region. Uh, we have uh, Internet uh, Forum <coughs> in the context of my association. Please note that we all should know that we uh, go into internet relationship. If I write uh, an article on a portal, you can, uh, anybody can write an article or set up an account. Even a pensioner uh, can publish an article in this forum. Uh, if we write an article there, then there is uh, the commentary section. The comments section, sometimes the comments are very unfavorable. Uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a lot of criticism, and it's hard to draw a line between hate, uh, offensive content, and constructive criticism. So if we uh, decide to publish uh, as citizen journalists, uh, we, sh we should be prepared for some people really offending us. Uh, not all of you, uh, not all of people will be, will be uh, saying they like it. So uh, we have to accept it and get immune to such uh, critique. Anybody can write. There is total freedom of expressing opinion. So that's the other side of the coin. Thank you. OK, let's move on to the second question. And then we'll continue the discussion. The second question, uh, take out your devices. And the second question is, what is the main problem in counteracting cyberbullying at school? Uh, is it uh, ineffective preventative action or lack of such action? Is it uh, difficult in detecting such cases? Or uh, or is it the wrong kind of uh, reaction to cyberbullying? It's uh, more even spread of re responses. Difficulty in detecting cyberbullying cases. Mm, 
9-12% wrong reaction intervention in case of cyberbullying, 9% uh, uh, ineffective uh, preventive action. Uh, so, what is your opinion on this? Where we have the bigger uh, shortages in prevention or in uh, uh, reacting or in detection? I personally uh, uh, answered uh, wrong uh, reaction, wrong intervention. Why? Because usually, and that's what I have experienced, it is so that when a student uh, comes to the teacher and tells him about this problem, uh, something happened, the uh, teacher replies, so what am I to do with it or about it? Did it happen at school or at home? The student answers, at home, not in the class. As teacher answers, so that's why you have your parents for. The parents should take care of this. And this is the end of uh, this discussion. So I agree that the kids do not come to the teachers because they know that teachers won't help them. I do not generalize, but uh, unfortunately, this is frequently the case. Teachers, um, I would not use uh, the, uh, I would not say majority of teachers, but I will say this, the majority of teachers, uh, we who deal with that uh, day to day, we are in minority. So I believe that majority of teachers, uh, unfortunately, they do not know how to uh, react or intervene, or they would rather not do it because they want to dump responsibility on somebody else. If that didn't happen at school, why should I take care of that? Thank you. Uh, I said uh, wrong intervention, or uh, I would say lack of uh, reaction, lack of intervention by a teacher. Because teachers, uh, when they uh, reply, what am I to do about it? They don't know really what to do about it. And I liked very much during this conference that one of the ladies presented here uh, specific proposals for such action. Also, in Poland, we have a kind of an action model for teachers. We should develop such an action model for teachers so that teachers know what to do, that they are not alone, that they can really work in team on responding to such problems. The press reports of uh, children's suicide also prove that the children have been left to themselves. Thank you. A quick comment. Yes, we are working on such uh, health models. We have. Uh, the response standards which we uh, rec recommend. Uh, the Glixay colleague uh, also uh, uh, made it clear. We uh, adapted the German material. Uh, we have very uh, specific uh, arguments that you can use in conversation with the perpetrator or uh, uh, the victim of cyberbullying. Litka. Uh, voice of uh, police, uh, uh, that's the institution I represent. I, no wonder that the two, there have been the same number of votes in the two uh, answers, because if we have a problem in, in the right detection, then we will definitely wrongly intervene. As a prevent prevention officer, I can tell you that you teachers, you know perfectly well what are all those uh, ways of taking preventative actions. There are plenty of examples and models. We, uh, the police uh, people, we visit schools and uh, give lectures there, and we focus on prevention. We got the guidelines from the ministry, and we shared the guidelines with you. 
What I miss, however, is that we want to stop at prevention only, but we forget that plenty of things taking place on uh, in the internet uh, are subject to legal regulations, and we must not ignore these uh, legal constraints. I know that the school has a lot of powers, uh, but sometimes the question, uh, the important thing is to uh, to entrust more responsibility with uh, children. And I uh, often say they also, those children, they have adults as the right addressees of their problems. So adults must know what to do with it or about it. If a parent uh, is not familiar with the apps, uh, 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 let the parent ask the teacher. If the teacher uh, is ignorant, let, uh, let him ask the others uh, only in this way. By cross-educating ourselves, we can help. Thank you. I refer uh, to the educator and the teacher, the two ladies. Uh, in the 21st century, I would be in favor of giving initiative over to the children and uh, involving the children in, in the uh, didactic process uh, in the educational process rather than preaching to them ex cathedra. The schools usually don't do that. Uh, teachers are well educated, are creative, but they, I believe they are afraid of going down to the level of the child and uh, uh, to the level of empathy with children's problems. In terms of uh, prevention, I would say that already in the grade one, two, three, you can introduce, for example, uh, a classroom blog, uh, uh, Facebook accounts, um, teaching children good manners and discussing with them. There are plenty of books uh, on the subject. Uh, and if the parents uh, at home don't do it, then the teachers can do it. Uh, so these are uh, really available methods that would could improve the quality of internet contacts. Mm, Netio.pl, uh, Shichaki.pl, these are our uh, portal services for young kids in the private school. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Monika Pieniek, Ministry of Digitalization. I would like to um, express opinion on one of the points made here, namely the children, even if they wanted, I mean, teachers, even if they wanted to behave properly and identify uh, web threats, they have not enough knowledge. They don't know how to do it. We are aware of this. Ministry of National Education is aware of this. And the ministry is about to publish or has already published special recommendations for schools containing procedures of response to threats, uh, physical threats and uh, cyber threats. Last Friday, uh, the report was published in the press uh, about the Ministry of Education coming up with this new guidance. The title of this document is uh, um, uh, Threats and Recommendations for Actions Against Such Threats. Maybe the title will be modified. I have read through those recommendations. They've been subdivided into different types of threats, uh, such as uh, uh, stumbling upon uh, uh, bad content or cyberbullying. What the teacher should do, how the teacher should take care of such a problem, where the teacher uh, should report a problem. Thank you. I'm pleased with your words because, uh, honestly speaking, in my primary school, uh, elementary school, I have colleagues uh, who, when they uh, 
who respond. You shouldn't have a Facebook account when a kid comes and uh, and uh, and complains that uh, it fell victim of aggression. After all, it's from the age of 13. So I feel that teachers feel at a loss. If something wrong takes place, this cannot be resolved overnight. It calls for several weeks, months long, month long work, and including involvement of parents. Uh, sometimes it, this conflict may grow uh, uh, up to the scale of the school. I work in a team of uh, people who support themselves. Uh, we are looking for solutions, but we need this organizational support uh, and outreach. The school pedagogue, classroom educator uh, should get involved. These are not petty problems. They are serious, and they, they uh, have an impact on on children's minds. I work in the musical school. Mm, and the, uh, in this year, one of the high, uh, uh, in one of the uh, senior classes, uh, there occurred sexting issue. Uh, a girl uh, made a selfie uh, slightly uh, in a slightly nude, sexy, and this selfie leaked out, and then the sexting problem uh, arose. So sometimes uh, an uh, exemplary student uh, in such situations show his or her second face in comments, re reactions to such things. And we wondered what to do, we invited police to cooperate. But we need institutional support, and that's what we expect. Thank you for those uh, contributions. The procedures are important, and our German partners, as they say, systemic work is equally important because this uh, is a broader uh, problem, uh, and you cannot just. Uh, Resolve it overnight. You need long-term action here. Microphones don't work on their own usually. Thank you for the microphone, Yolanta Ogonowska. I am a member of the Congress of uh, Polish Women. Uh, a year ago, we have been invited as members to a debate to the Polish Parliament debate dedicated to violence. There were organizations uh, whose funds were cut and restricted. And uh, a lot of women showed up interested by the topic. And among other things, one, uh, one of the lead politi female politicians has presented a huge thick book where she pasted all the hates about herself she found uh, online. Now I'm thinking to which extent this example doesn't come from the top to the kids, basically. Uh, I felt I, I need to say that. The whole internet is full of hate. And what can the poor kids do about it? Well, thank you for this uh, opinion. It's true. It appears in discussions we are focusing on kids, on youth, and a lot of those behaviors, uh, cyberbullying, sexting, hate, are very common among adult users, adult users. We are giving the example, unfortunately. There is a lady, maybe you first. The microphone is, is there. Grzegorz Czapla. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as I remember, 2009, 2010, there were first procedures uh, the foundation, together with NASC, uh, prepared for uh, victims and perpetrators of uh, bullying. Uh, it's not only for school. I understand this information is not generally accessible, but I see those documents are evolving. They are being perfected, improved. That's one thing. Uh, 
which means starting from last year, we have the procedures already. And what the lady from the police said, we have to dare collaborating with the institution. School, the mission of the school is not to handle the whole problem from A to Z. I'm a school headmaster, special school. Don't be afraid working with the police. This doesn't impact the image of the school, but indeed the, 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 the environment becomes safer. We are not able as teachers uh, to resolve all the issues on our own, and we are not even allowed to do so. Thank you very much indeed. It's important what you have you've said. I confirm the procedures, materials concerning cyberbullying and reaction procedures. Well, there is a lot of that in the internet, a lot of materials. But without a systemic approach, collaboration of the whole community, it will be very difficult to, to put such a procedure in, uh, in practice. It's a, it's a dead entity otherwise. It doesn't fulfill its, its role. But we hope after this conference you will know more and you will apply this knowledge to, uh, to your communities. Our time is coming to an end. I, we thank you very much indeed for this discussion.